Last week, we revisited some R fundamentals and also extended our understanding of R. I had also talked about the process of data science and in that I had indicated that one of the important topics there is exploratory data analysis. That is exploring your data to find out what kind of patterns exist within and what kind of uh, hypotheses we could generate based on the data. And then of course we would go on to build a model or build several models to test some of these hypotheses. This week we'll look deeper into exploratory data analysis and we'll also look deeper than what we did in the last course. So we already know from prior understanding of R that you can generate a basic data summary of a data frame in R by just using uh, uh, the function summary. Uh, but prior to that, let's take a look at some of the code here. Uh, till now, we've only used read.csv and given the file name. But the read.csv function has some other options that we have not explored so far. i just point out these right now. Uh, you can say header equals true or of course this is the default so you don't really need to say it. What this is saying is that in your CSV file the first row of data contains the column headers uh, which is the column names or the names of the attributes within the data file. Uh, all the data files we have used so far have indeed had the header, uh, header row uh, and so you could indicate header equals true if the header row exists or you could say header equals false if the header row doesn't exist. Okay. Of course, you like I said, header equals true is the default, so you don't have to specify it. But if your data file does not have headers, then you really should specify header equals false. Otherwise, what R will do is it'll take the first row of data and think of those, uh, think of uh, that row of data as really the column names, which would be wrong because those are actual data elements. Okay, so that's one important thing that we need to look at. Another one is strings as factors equals false is what we are saying. In other words, when you give R a data file and you read it in through read.csv, then for every column of data, R just tries to infer what kind of data the column contains. If all the values are numbers, it's going to treat that as a numeric column. Uh, if the, all, the, all the values are non-numbers, in fact, even if there is one non-number in a column, then R is going to assume that that data is character data, and by default, it treats all character data as factors or as categorical variables. Okay. Now, sometimes we may not want R to behave like this. So, for example, in this particular data file that we are using, autompg.csv, one of the column contains the names of the cars. Okay, now we don't want to treat the names of the cars as really factors, we just want to treat it as character strings, right? Uh, so if you don't want the character data to be by default treated as factors, then you can say strings as factors equals false. The default, of course, is strings as factors equals true. That's the default. So you don't specify anything, that's what happens, and that's what has happened throughout the last semester. Okay, uh, now one of the columns in this data file is... Uh, number of cylinders and it's a numeric column okay now for the purposes of our analysis I want to treat it as a factor the number of cylinders I just want to treat it as a factor and of course we have looked at ways by which you can convert a, a numeric column into a factor or in other words ask R to treat a numeric column as a factor one way to do that would be simply to say auto dollar cylinders is factor auto dollar cylinders and close the parentheses right here okay so that way even though the values are numeric it'll treat it as a factor because we've said it's a factor but here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to go a little bit further and tell r not just to treat the values as numbers but to give them a little more descriptive names for example uh, the the actual data in the file for cylinders are three four five six and eight and whenever it encounters three cylinders, I want it to say three cylinders, three CYL, four CYL, etc. Just a little bit more descriptive uh, because we are going to be plotting some graphs and within the graphs, we would like to see these rather than just the numbers. Okay, so to do that, you can extend the factor function and do it this way. So here I'm saying factor auto dollar cylinders, the levels are three, four, five, six, eight. These are the actual values of cylinders inside our data file. And then I'm saying 
give those levels the following labels okay three cylinder four cylinder five cylinder etc so once i do this subsequently uh, you'll see that uh, the, in the charts the titles would be a little more meaningful okay uh, so summary auto is the summary function we are using to generate summary we you've used this quite a bit in the past and when you do that uh, I'm showing you only two of the summaries. Of course, when you do this, it's going to give you a summary of every single attribute in the auto data frame. I'm showing you only two of those attributes uh, just to highlight the distinction of how R summarizes numeric data and character data. Okay, so for numeric data, we already know that R gives you uh, a six number summary, minimum, maximum, first quartile, which is the 25th percentile, third quartile which is the 75th percentile, median 50th percentile or the middle value and the mean which is the average. So for a numeric attribute this is the way in which R summarizes the data. When it comes to categorical or factors it summarizes it differently. It summarizes the data by telling us for each level of the factor how many rows are there within our data frame. Okay, So it turns out that we're, there are only four three-cylinder cars, 204 four-cylinder cars, and so on. Incidentally, because we had done the factor conversion in the previous slide, uh, that is why you're seeing three-cylinder, four-cylinder, five-cylinder described explicitly. Otherwise, it would have just been three, four, five, six, eight here. Okay, so that's just how R does a basic data summary. Okay, so it's only the partial output that I've shown above. There's also another function called uh, the str or the string function and what it does is it gives you a, a string description of a variable. So for example, if I did str auto, this is what I'm going to see, right? What this tells us is that it is a data frame, data dot frame. So we know that auto is a data frame. Uh, we also from know from here that it has 398 observations of 10 variables. In other words, it has 398 rows and 10 columns. Furthermore, since this is a data frame, it is showing us each of the individual variables like number, MPG, cylinders, etc. and showing us some idea uh, or giving us clearly an idea of what type of values are contained in that particular column. So number is an integer, MPG it says is a number. The difference between these two is this column contains actual integer values whereas this column contains some integer values and some non-integer numeric values. So it calls it as numeric. It shows us that cylinders is a factor uh, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, uh, so that's what uh, we have. In fact, car name uh, should not be a factor, right? Because when we read it, we told it strings as factors equals false, right? So uh, clearly this output is coming from uh, sometime when I read the data without specifying that option, right? So this is really not what you will see if you read the data using the uh, using the code that I have given. Okay, you can also see use this str function to see the details of individual columns. So for example, instead of doing str auto, I could be doing str auto dollar displacement. In which case you're going to get just the string representation of that variable alone which will look something like this this is uh, you know so it, you'll just see uh, auto dollar displacement and then numeric and it'll show you this now these numbers that you see here are uh, some of the initial values contained in that particular uh, in each of those variables right so this gives us a good overview of what the data frame actually contains what the variable actually contains okay so now we're going to go and look at data visualization because data visualization is a very important aspect or very important component of data exploration right in fact a lot of times it is by visualizing the data that we actually explore it right the human brain is better equipped to deal with visual data than with textual data Right, so that's the thing. And uh, Edward Tufte is a person who is a pioneer in data visualization. And Edward Tufte has laid out certain principles of data visualization uh, that I find to be very useful to keep in mind. Uh, the first principle that Edward Tufte says is focus on content 
not the visualization technique, right? Very often what happens is that we are using some tool to generate our visualizations and we look at the kind of, uh, kind of charts that the tool can produce and we tend to focus our whole work around what the tool can do, right? So the focus should not be on what the tool can do or what kind of visualization technique we are using. Instead, it should be on the content of the data, right? That is, our goal should be to say, well, here's a story that I want to present with the data. And then I specify or then I select what kind of visualization technique I use for that, right? We should not let the technique drive everything. In fact, the, uh, the, the content is what should drive uh, how we visualize and present our data. That's a very important aspect. The second very important aspect of data visualization, a principle that Tufti has enunciated, is compare, don't just describe. In other words, every time we show some chart, we should try to be showing something comparative, right? We should be showing A versus B. And we'll see lots of examples as we go forward. So for example, suppose we are given a data set, uh, the auto MPG data set itself with mileage for many cars, with the highway mileage for many cars. There's no point in just showing one particular car and saying, or uh, this is the box plot of the car mileage for all the cars in our data set, right? Rather than that, it'll be much more interesting if we could say, here is the uh, box plot of the car mileage for different types of cars, for example, by cylinder, right? So we can say here's a box plot of mileage for the four cylinder cars and here is a box plot of the mileage for the six cylinder cars, right? So now there's a comparison between four and six cylinders or uh, multiple sets of cylinders we could show, okay? Uh, or the number of gears and so on, right? So then you see a comparison and that triggers certain thought processes in our mind and it allows us to explore the data. So that's very important to show comparisons and not just show descriptions, individual descriptions. Another very important principle that Tufti says is show multiple variables. Don't try to just show a single variable or just a couple of variables because obviously when you're exploring a complex data set, uh, the mind, uh, we are looking for patterns that cut across many variables and our data sets usually have many variables, right? So once again, it is by exploring several variables together that we understand certain hidden uh, patterns within our data. So exploring multiple variables is another very important thing. And finally, show possible causality, right? In other words, what we're saying is uh, we, we want not just to show some numbers, but we want the audience or whoever is looking at our analysis uh, to take away some more deep information from the data, right? So we want to be able to say, okay, you know what? It looks like this is causing this. I'm not saying it's 100% uh, we can infer the causality, but when you, when you look at the data set and then say, look, there seems to be a connection between X and Y. There seems to be some strong relationship here between these and these possibly this is causing that, right? So once you do that, it helps in our understanding of the data and it helps takes the people who are watching it towards decision making. So these are important principles of data visualization. And what we'll do is uh, at this point, we will switch over to actually looking at various uh, visualizations of the data. We'll use R to do that. And uh, we'll try and apply these principles every time as we go along.